Paul's Picks, and today we're going to do a open box install and review of these Power Sport disc brakes. And at the end, I'll reveal my next performance upgrade. Here is the box where the brakes came in. It is not very big box, maybe a foot by foot square, and, uh, maybe 10 inches deep, but man, is it heavy. If I open the box, here's how it's packed. We got brake pads, front and back, and we got four discs. Oh. Yeah, four. Small ones will speed it back, and the big ones, the small ones, or the big ones in the front. Okay, so here's the original wheel with the original brakes on them. See that in there? Okay, see how it looks. And check it out. There are the rotors with the holes in them to dissipate heat. That is the plan. Hopefully they're a tad bit lighter too with all those holes missing. I would assume they're a little bit lighter, right? Maybe just a little bit, but every little bit counts, especially when it's the rotational mass, like on the wheels and on the brake disc. And here are the brake pads they came with. These are ceramic brake pads. Hopefully they work well. So here they are on the vehicle. The just vented disc brakes. Ooh, shiny. It's so nice and new. Kind of chromish looking compared to the back ones that are still the standard stock orange disc. But they'll be changed out soon enough. What do you think? You look nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> See? You look nice. <laughs> Bended disc brakes. What? Okay, so now the the discs are on, the pads are on, but they're only on on the front wheels. Uh, I was going to put them on, I got a bottom for all four, but what happened was two things. One, I was getting really low on time because I had to go pick up my brother from the airport. And two, I couldn't really get them off the disc. The brakes, the pads were easy. I didn't do that. I actually did end up changing them out. Um, actually, another third, a third reason. So one, the disc wouldn't come out; they wouldn't remove. I couldn't get it off the, get off the whatever mounted to. And, it, and I knew for a fact that uh, you could either try to pry them off, like with a, or knock them with a with a mallet, or there's these little screw holes that you can set a screw in there, and you can just like basically put the screw in there, and it'll kind of pop it out. I didn't have the screw size. So I think I found it online, so I wrote down, I don't have it on me right now, but with the screw size, you can screw it in and pop it out. The third thing was, the front brakes were definitely, without a doubt, really, really low. But the, the back brakes were really fine. They, were, they, were, they weren't low at all. They didn't need to be changed. But I did want to put the disc on there, but it really wasn't that important on the back. I'll still replace them at some point. I'm not really urgent, but uh, just, so just so they'll really match. So anyways, most of your solid power is in the front. Anyways, and they were really low. And I really had a problem. The reason why I knew I needed brakes is because there was so much play in the foot pedal. With the brake pedal. So it would, I had to push it really far in. And then, uh, and then it just grabbed real fast. And be like, whoa, wait a minute. It was really annoying because when you drive this car, you kind of get used to that play. Then when you jump in somebody else's car, as soon as you touch the brakes, it feels like it stops. So that was annoying. Anyways, it, so I definitely needed brakes in the front, without a doubt. So how do they feel? What in the world? Get on with it. Get on with it. Um, they feel great. Now, you're supposed to break them in for so long before you really get crazy with them. And I just put them on, so I only put maybe, uh, maybe 60 miles on it. But it did completely fix the play in the brake pedal. So now when I go over to hit the brakes, it's, it's you know, it's, you touch the brake a little bit and then you can feel the resistance. And it's a lot more linear. So, um, hopefully, I mean, 
the reason why I got the, the, the vented brakes for two reasons. One, they weren't much more expensive than the regular ones. And two, um, they'd be a tiny bit lighter. Okay, there's three reasons. And three, you're supposed to dissipate the heat better, which you don't really need for your average everyday driving. But at some point, when I start doing some autocross, maybe other activities, maybe take it to a track day or something, that might that might make a difference. That might play a part. That might uh, benefit my uh, my driving. So that's the reason why I got it. Okay, so that's so that that that's so like that covers the brakes. Now there is a bonus, a bonus uh, modification. Now this last modification I did, kind of on a whim, but I'm sure it's going to improve my performance tenfold. It's going to be the fastest car on the road for this one little thing. What is it? What is it? Do you say? Yes, a carbon fiber look-alike shifter knob. Because for one thing, you want as little weight on your car as possible. You know, you'll make it lighter and lighter. And that shifter knob definitely was heavier than the stock. What? Okay. So it probably won't improve my performance all that much. But it looks great and it feels good. I, but actually, uh, the, the funny thing was, when I do shift it in manual mode, it does feel much quicker because it's like real slick on your hands. Well, maybe it does make an improvement. Well, that's my show for today. Thanks for watching Paul's Picks. That's my performance mods. And uh, hit like, subscribe, make a comment. Tell me what you think about my shifter knob. <laughs> and my brakes and all that stuff. Um, and uh, like I said, hit subscribe so you can see other videos from Paul's Picks.